let us talk about the clinical manifestations of homocysteine urea. The clinical manifestations of homocysteine urea can broadly be subdivided into four categories. You can have manifestations like ocular features. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Prep Ladder. Let us talk about the clinical manifestations of homocysteine urea. The clinical manifestations of homocysteine urea can broadly be subdivided into four categories. You can have manifestations like ocular features. You can have CNS involvement. A third category of manifestations include skeletal system. And fourthly, there can be other features. Ocular manifestation are the initial presentation, the hallmark presentation and the most common manifestation which is also called the hallmark finding of homocysteine urea is a condition called as ectopia lentis. There is subluxation of the lens of the eye. This subluxation of the lens of the eye typically appears between 3 to 8 years. So, it is the first manifestation to appear in the eyes. So, 3 to 8 years is the age during which it manifests. What are some of the points that you need to remember? This ectopia lentis is bilaterally symmetrical. Both the eyes are involved and it is inferonasal. Inferonasal means down and towards the medial side, towards the nasal side. So, both the eyes, you will have the dislocation occurring like this, towards down and towards the nose. So, inferonasal dislocation is seen. And what does ectopia lentis lead to? It produces severe myopia in the child and it produces tremulous iris which is also called as iridodonensis. So, ocular manifestations appear quite early in the disease. So, if I have to show you a picture, this is how the ectopia lentis in homocysteine urea looks like. So, this is the left eye which has been shown. So, left eye, so it is happening this is where this is where the nose might be and so it is happening inferior and towards the nasal side this is the nose this is the nose which is present here so this is how ectopia lentis typically looks like then you have the cns involvement cns involvement will be in the form of progressive intellectual dysfunction or mental retardation there will be psychiatric and behavioral changes these may include subtle behavioral changes or frank conditions like autism and ADHD or depression or related disorders which are seen in as high as 50% of the patients. You may also find seizures to be present in 20% of these patients. But peripheral neuropathy features are not that predominant. So, it is the central nervous system which is mainly involved. Very rare features may include psychosis as well. Coming to skeletal manifestations, they have a typical morphonoid habitus. Morphonoid habitus, I hope you all know, they will have long slender limbs and there will be arachnodactyly along with some patients having hyperextensible joints. Although hyperextensible joints is not a very uh, classical finding associated with morphon, but some of these patients may rarely have these morphon-like features. Secondly, they may have Bony abnormalities like pescavus, they may have pectus carinatum or pectus excavatum. They may have features like high arched palate they may have scoliosis and they may have overcrowding of teeth.
the other manifestations they may include white skin so they have a very fair skin blue eyes and typically they are found to have a slight malar rash or malar erythema in the cheek and nasal bridge region so these are the typical clinical manifestations the four categories under which i have divided so that it is easy for you to remember and the hallmark are the ocular findings so what are the complications that you will come across in these children the complication the most common and the most important complication that you need to remember is thromboembolism why does thromboembolism happen thromboembolism risk is increased because of homocysteine what homocysteine does is it causes multiple problems it causes oxidant stress so free oxidant free uh, radical formation is increased it causes endothelial cell injury it has a tendency to promote abnormal angiogenesis and it decreases fibrinolysis activity or fibrinolytic activity which is normally happening so the combination of these is responsible for increased risk of thromboembolism in the body thromboembolism can occur at any age and can can involve frequently it can involve the brain as well thromboembolism is considered to be the cause of death in homocysteine urea later in life the milder forms they can result in myocardial infarction at a relatively early age in adults as well the second complication are related to the ocular complications long standing neglected ectopia lentis so what it will lead to it will lead to multiple so not only ectopia lentis causing vision vision problems they, you can have other ocular complications also as well so they may have cataract they may have glaucoma the risk of these complications is increased 3 to 5 times as compared to general population there may be increased risk of staphylomas there may be optic atrophy and retinal detachment thirdly there is a increased risk of vertebral fractures this point is not mentioned in nelson but it is uh, it is a important point to remember because the nelson does accept that most of these children if you do x ray spine x ray spine the, it will show generalized osteopenia so osteopenia is present even in the childhood as age advances osteopenia becomes severe and in mid adulthood if they do survive till that time they will have vertebral fractures causing paraparesis and paraplegia and fourthly you may have other rare complications like acute pancreatitis and spontaneous pneumothorax so these are the other complications which can happen but the most important one that you need to remember is thromboembolism which is the major cause of morbidity and mortality mm -hmm.